Hey, so, Gregor again, I, I ran out of DAS storage, so let's do a second run of this part. And one of the last things I want to show you is I have a, uh, I have a capacitor inductor I was working on. Um, technically it's not finished, it's just taking so long to work on. This is a bifeeler wound coil, um, and it's layered with aluminum and magnetite and rubber. Um, and so basically what happens is one coil goes to the top, touches to the top part, and so it works like a ground too. It has this whole aluminum tape um, covering, just like this one. And the current goes back to the bomb, and then it goes back up to the coil again. So it's a bifeeler winding, and it's also related to Tesla's, uh, two of Tesla's patents. His, uh, he has a cone transformer, um, and so you can just put a spiral winding on the bomb of this. But, just something cool to show you that I don't think I've ever shown anyone. Um, we have uh, my big rotating coil. Something to think about is if you have that circuit where the spark gap is firing through the center of this, this is one thing I've tried, what happens is if this coil is connected to the circuit you know, that's firing, so the voltage, you're fi the frequency you're firing into the coil, um, uh, they're, they're all connected, essentially. Um, that the magnetic field that's focused in the center of this coil will um, magnetically quench the spark gap. It'll twist the spark. It'll cut it off. And so what happens is you're getting a perpetual system. As the frequency increases, the magnetic field's going to become stronger, and the more it's going to twist and snap that uh, the spark. So just something to think about. People can experiment with that. But also this design is... I don't know, it's pretty, you know, natural intuitive. You have the, the magnetic field collapsing and expanding within this toroid. Um, and some to imagine in terms of actual motion, and this relates to the Earth, is the wobble. And so when you have these cones like this, you can imagine the cone, or the toroid, actually wobbles. And some that could probably be achieved with piezoelectric materials. And it'll wobble up and down. Now, if you think about Don Smith's application, um, where you have a capacitor plate above the null zone, below the null zone, and getting power out of it, um, what happens when you have one part of the toroid up and one part of the toroid bomb? You have your positive charges on top and your positive and negative charges on bomb, and it will rotate. So something to think about in terms of actually powering the coil. Um, so those were just a couple ideas I wanted to share with you. Um, just, you know, think about these things. Everything I'm sharing, I'm not like 100% sure on. Um, the magnetic field in the uh, let's get back to this graphic. It's not graphic matrix, okay? This one right here. We have the magnetic field, and there's three different sets to the magnetic field. Now, my interpretation is, uh, you could say this is north pole energy, this is south pole energy, and this is your null zones, or even your diamagnetic energy. Um, and if you look at the vortex model I create, it shows that these are actually moving in rings. And the rings are expanding and collapsing, the rings of magnetism. Um, usually what we consider to be rings of magnetism are the pathways these rings are, f are flowing. Um, and however this is also conceived that this is north direction and this is south direction. And that this is a scalar field. And so if this is north and this is south, and this is, so north, south, north, south, and this is your scalar standing wave creating it. Um, the two concepts I've been working with for a while, I'm honestly not positive about. Um, so, something else you know, you guys can think about, discuss. If you are new to Vortex Mathematics and want to get more into it, there is a, uh, a, uh, a Google group that we discuss this. And there's also vortexspace.org um, that just started out to showcase a lot of this work uh, and a lot of the other people working in Vortex Math with coil systems. Um, some really cool people, like Jack. Uh, like Jack, like Jack and, and Russ, uh, they're doing some really cool things. And Andy, um, uh, Andy, I meant Alex, just horrible with names. 
but new coil configurations that people are working on and some really beautiful minds out there and it's not really a one person effort we're working as this as a group so join our group give us input you know maybe you'll have the next revelation in terms of where to go with this uh, and uh, is there anything else I wanted to say I really haven't like shared any of my new ideas lately so I really hope this gets some minds thinking um, that's what I love to do is inspire so hopefully I'm doing that as best I can and uh, yeah I talked about the rings of magnetism I think that's the only thing I wanted to talk about um, but yeah the ideas are there start building start fabricating let's let's see what we can do with this it'd be really cool to see if someone can actually get a cool octahedral mall going um, I really want to use the right materials and using the bismuth tin alloy not cheap. Um, uh, there are other alloys you can use um, too. Um, the the godsend of all alloys I'm looking at is two parts gold and one part bismuth. Not going to be cheap, but it is a superconductor and has some really interesting properties. So I think that's it, and I will sign off. And hopefully you'll see my video maybe a little bit more organized. Um, the public presentation I'm doing tonight um, and see me working with crowds and much better working with crowds than with the camera I'm just sort of sitting in my basement by myself talking to myself in all honesty and really I like having an audience performer at heart so uh, let's uh, let's fabricate some things awesome cool namaste have a good day my friends